Hello and welcome to my beginner's guide for Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Express. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the things I wish I was told when I first got Final Cut Express. In this video, I'm going to be specifically using Final Cut Express. This was a product that unfortunately was discontinued. I know that a bunch of my viewers do have Final Cut Express or they're about to get it. And I promised them a beginner's guide for it. And so here it is. In this video, I'm basically going to be talking about things I wish I was told when I first got Final Cut Express. Now this is actually what a completed movie would look like. Now don't get nervous, this is not as complicated as you might think. A quick tour is these green rectangles in the bottom are basically the audio, and these blue boxes on top of this dividing line are video, and these purple boxes are usually pictures or text. So it's not too complicated. In Final Cut, I believe you can have up to 99 different layers. And that's the same with the audio. I went probably all the way down to 40 or 30. Audio can really make or break a movie, so I try and put as much effort as I can into audio files. So that's the bottom window. This top window on the left here is basically going to contain Every video file, every sound effect, every picture I use, you can sort it out into folders and have it a lot easier to organize for yourself, and your sequences. Sequence is basically what you are making when you make a movie. You are making a sequence. This middle window is the current segment that you are viewing, and this right window, how your final product is going to look at the frame you have selected. This is this yellow line here in the bottom window is the frame you are currently viewing. So that's a quick little tour of how the default layout is. One more thing to mention on the side here is these are your tools to do your cutting and your zooming in. And this bar here shows your audio levels. If these lights light up, that means your audio is too loud and you need to decrease the volume. Otherwise, you will lose audio quality. So like I said, that's the basic layout in a default configuration. Now let's get to actually editing a movie. So what I'm going to do first is go File, New Project. I'm going to close my old project so we don't get it confused. So this is how it first looks out when you're doing a new project. It is currently untitled. Sequence is untitled. You have your sequence already open. If you do not, just double click on your sequence. You have your windows here that I explained earlier. So let's actually name our sequence. I am going to just double click on it and type in beginners, muzzle flash, hit enter. Now you can see our sequence has changed names and also it's changed names down here. Our project is still the same. So let's go file, save project as. Try and do that right away because you can't render files, you can't save files. You got to make sure you have it saved. So make sure you're saving it in an organized fashion. Now Final Cut Express and Final Cut Pro are actually pretty simple programs. They're not as complicated in my opinion as Adobe After Effects. They made it really user friendly. So that's why I like it a lot. So now that we have that saved, Let's add in some video files that we made. So I'm going to go File, Import, Files. And I'm going to go to where my file is saved. I'm just going to click on all of these. Click Choose. And now as you can see, they're in our side here. Now I may want to organize this a little bit. I have two sound effects and I probably want the sound effects to all be in one pile. So I'm going to go File, New, Bin. Let's call this Sound Effects. Now I can drag what I want into that folder. When I click on this, my sound effects folder will expand and I have all my sound effects sorted out. If you want to save time making movies, I can't stress this enough, you have to stay organized. 
So now let's add in a video segment. I'm going to use this video file, double click on it, and now it's going to appear in the window next to it. Now there's this arrow here, and that'll tell me what frame I'm looking at. If I click around, it'll show different frames he's doing. I can also just hit play. Let me turn off the sound here. And now the movie is playing. So what we do next is we use our keyboard and let's find a frame where we first want to start using the footage. So here's my frame. Now what I'm going to do is press I on the keyboard. So you can see this little symbol up here. And same here. This is the in frame. I'll get to more of that later. Now let's find our frame that we want to stop using. How about here? I'm going to press O on the keyboard. Now the same symbols appeared. These are our out frames. So now we have our frame bracket set. So I'm going to drag our movie file and drag it right down here into the first layer. Let go of the file. Now this window is start to is going to show footage. This is exactly how our movie is going to look in the end. Now let's also look at this stuff down here. We have our blue layer. That's our video file. We have our green, which is audio, but we can't quite see the audio. So we're going to click on this button down here and click on show audio waveforms. Now we can actually see our audio. It still is a little small. So on the side here, we have our zoom tool. You can also hold down the mouse click and you can have a zoom out tool. If you don't want to use the mouse button and use the shortcut keys on your keyboard, just press Z and you can zoom in on this timeline. You can also use these buttons down here to make more layers visible at one time. I'm going to have it on a medium setting right now, but still zoom in a little bit. So now we can see what we need to see. So if you're using Final Cut and you hit play, you can see this big blue box says unrendered the whole time. Well, what does that mean? That means you can't see your video at all. You have to render it. So make sure you have the bottom window selected and hit Command R. This thing will pop up saying writing video. Now rendering video files takes a lot of memory on your computer and it does take a large amount of time. So in the meantime I'm going to show you where these render files appear. If you click on your computer name and you go into documents folder, you can see down here there is a folder called Final Cut Express Documents. This is your renders files folder. These are all the videos that you have currently rendered. If you have finished a video, you can probably delete these render files. The only consequence is you have to re-render your video file if you need to reopen it. Personally, since I edit a ton of videos, I got a huge hard drive. Uh, I think it's two terabytes because my computer is only down to 20 gigabytes. So that's the problem with the rendering. In Final Cut Pro, you probably don't have to render, but in Final Cut Express, you do. So now I can actually scrub through the video at my choosing because it's a whole thing is rendered. I can also hit play. The play button is over here. So let's add in a muzzle flash. I'm going to use a .png file over here. I'm just going to double click on it. This is how it looks default. I will do a specific tutorial on muzzle flashes in Final Cut Express at some point in the future. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe. So here's where I'm going to have the muzzle flash appear. This is the exact frame. 
Now for pictures, they already have a in and out bracket selected for you. By default, it is a pretty lengthy time, but that's not a big deal. So now drag the picture and put it in place. So you can see it lasted quite a bit of time. Let me lower this bar here. And I chose to put it on layer two. Layer two will be at a higher layer than layer one. The higher numbers you have, the more foreground you have. Now you can have up to 99 here. You can always right click and click add track and add more if you need. If you do not have one already available, you can drag the file and put it where you would want the track to be and it'll make a new one for you. See here's now layer 6. I'm going to delete this for now. Now we don't want our muzzle flash to cover our whole screen and we don't want it to last so long on screen as well. It's lasting almost a full 10 seconds. So on the side here are the toolbars we will be using to do basic editing. If you hold down the click, you can click on the blade tool. If you want to get to it quickly, you can press B on the keyboard. Now, here is the blades tool. I can cut frames up, and then I can press A on the keyboard, or I can use this little mouse button here. This is the select tool. Now I can select certain segments and press delete on my keyboard to get rid of them. I highly recommend knowing that A is the select tool, B is the blades tool, and Z is the zoom tool. One other thing to note is we have these buttons here. This is the snapping tool. If I turn it off, I can press B on the keyboard here, and now I have the blades tool. I can go wherever I need along the frames. I can press A and I won't snap in place. I can scroll anywhere I want. If snapping is on, I can just get near where I need and it will snap right in place. As you can see, it just jumps in place. It will snap here, it will snap here. This snapping tool is handy when you're doing some precision editing as well. Pressing N on the keyboard turns that on and off. This is the link selection. Let me show you how that works. If the linking selection is on, that means the audio and video file together will be selected. Now let me unselect that and turn off linking. Now just the video will be selected or just the audio will be selected. I'm going to turn on snapping for now, and I'm going to delete this. Now we need to make this muzzle flash. Now as you can see, I can drag it around. Let me make this window a little bigger. I can drag this muzzle flash around and put it around in, and move it around my screen. I can also do that with the background, but I'm not going to. If you're having trouble selecting a certain feature in your video, you can always click on the box at the bottom and click on the exact item you want. Now I can also change its size. If you first got the program, you won't be able to do that unless you go to the top over here, click on this, and click on image and wireframe. That will let you adjust the size. Without it selected, I can't do anything to the photo. So make sure, I always, so I always recommend have image and wireframe selected. One other thing to note is I can press using my arrow keys up and down to different checkpoints in my movie. Pressing up will take me to more of the beginning. Pressing down will take me to more of the end. It will snap to the intervals in your film. You can also use left and right to go frame by frame. This also helps with precision editing. 
Now, since the muzzle flash is only supposed to be in the movie for about one or two frames, I am going to go and hit right on the arrow pad once. Now I am going to press the blade button and click on the frame using snapping. Now I'm going to press A, click on the rest of the muzzle flash, and then delete. I'm going to go back one frame, and now we have our muzzle flash in place. Now how do we add special effects, really, is the main question. Well, you can add in special effects a multiple of ways, but I'm going to show you my favorite way.